Hello, allow me to continue. Last time I left you with uh, a paper which described how cooling is done in a rack and uh, it was uh, early mobile telephone rack. It is slightly different from the cell phone thing because when Jensen made that uh, paper in 1972, probably the so called radio telephone uh, was a little uh, not as uh, ubiquitous as now. So, that was from there. <coughs> Since then, things have come a long way and uh, as I have told you about uh, earlier, the academic lot of analysis is there, most of them know, tremendous amount of analysis. And in the case of the what do you call our uh, actual industry practices have hired uh, professionals who have had this uh, experience, I would not call it academic or not and uh, lot of it has not been freely available in the public domain. So, it is worthwhile reading the public domain uh, material that is available first hand. If my if I read it and uh, repeat it again, I may have a little uh, bias, so I am avoiding it and uh, uh, kindly, I mean, follow. This is from a company called uh, Engineered Airflow. So, one of the first thing is saying thermal, you also start at the device level. So, we have this what are called thermal wires. What a thermal wire does is it uh, from top to bottom uh, they have. Uh, you know they they can they put copper uh, which allows us to conduct. So, we have this very interesting thing no saying first of all natural or forced convection you decide on it. Secondly, you also decide on required amount of air flow as I have told you in one of my earlier lectures it is not as simple as saying you give this necessary thing because it is not like a an experimental setup. In an experimental setup, you will be able to pick things and uh, you know decide what to do. In this case, even if you see a simple what you call a stacked uh, rack like this, you notice that there is lot of shadowing, shadowing from various things. It may be a loosely you know talked thing about saying whether it blocks air flow which happens all the time. So, you have here at this extreme left you have several what do you call like, you have seen this no very large components and then you have certain capacitors and then uh, I do not know whether these are relays or uh, you know heat uh, conducting I mean heat uh, generating components and so on. All these impaired effective heat transfer, which will come to a very, very important issue that is about optimizing the layout. It looks like even before you attempt any analysis, a preliminary layout is needed and uh, sometimes it finds counterintuitive. If you put the hottest components at the beginning of the air flow while well the cold air enters, it looks that they get the maximum what you call advantage. But the disadvantage is that the air in the trailing path is likely to be heated up. Now, that may be exceeding the inlet requirements for the next uh, component in one way. It is a little intuitive and then counterintuitive also. Then, how do we deal with it? That is where your uh, what you call design thinking comes in, saying try 
various alternatives. I have given you an example earlier saying we had a rack of so many I think total 6 sub racks and then the only thing we could do is allow inlet air after the third sub rack and then try to exhaust the air that is already pre warmed up and we have taken it and it works like that. We see here locate hotter components in favorable areas that is what I was just now talking about. Second is heat sinks saying uh, where all would you put them and finally, important thing we are coming to here is you need to locate sensors to see how well things work. This you would have noticed happens in already what you call highly optimized the or ubiquitous uh, PC. So, you notice that the chip itself you know probably has a way of uh, measuring its temperature itself and then that is given to a fan and the fan can run at two speeds. And uh, why not the higher speed all the time when a nuisance is the noise, the noise is so ridiculous that you cannot afford to keep the fan running at all the speeds. So, you can I will now see yeah air flow commonly used provided by fans and forced cooling or by buoyancy effects in natural amount of flow and developed in equipment depends upon the pressure losses. This seems to be most difficult to estimate. It is easy you have a box and then uh, you have a inlet and you have an outlet and then uh, the just like you would do in any other fluid control you have some idea of the system resistance. But in our case we also have lot of blockages because of the component. So, loosely we can estimate what is the total of area if you have a cross sectional area imagine you have this much of a cross sectional area and then we can. So, if I put it like this if I have this much of a cross sectional area we have various components and all that you can estimate now what is the free area that is required compared to the fan inlet and then you have this free area and then it goes out easy to understand and just like you would do in uh, plumbing you can also have certain estimates about length of the path path length also is an estimate. In the case of plumbing you will notice that uh, the requirement of the pump the water pump determines on two things one is the head that is required another is the length of pipe. So, you if this much length of pipe and you know how much of resistance it gives per running meter easy enough is it not and then next is several places you have features like elbows, walls and all that nowhere invariably you have a small discharge coefficient. So, if you add all this discharge coefficients and if you add all the you know pressure drop across the length and you know your requirements of how much of fluid you want on the other side it is possible for you to estimate the size of the pump. It is a little like that which is absolutely no problem. Uh, the place where I have taken this from uh, obviously, they use both ok. So, we have about 5 to 8 meters per second in computers and then in this case they have uh, 1 and a half to 2.5 meters in telecom natural convection comes to typically 0.1 to only 0.25 meters per second. Is it good or bad it is for us to decide. My choice is if there is a way of your managing with natural convection design everything with natural convection, but give a little bit of aid using have loose fans or you know you have a little bit of assisted uh, you know circulation and so on then you have the mainframe computers. Mainframe computers obviously have noticed very very high 8 meters per second and all that it is it is a lot of sorry
a lot of blessed. So, if you remember in one of the earlier slides uh, which I have shown from uh, Schonholzer saying it looks like beyond this area 5 actually they have given 6. The rate at which things come down uh, what you call varies drastically. So, obviously, somebody has done the actual measurement. Previous slide talks to you about sensors related to sensors is how do you now take those sensors and use other preventive action saying can you make the whole circuit design go a little cooler. So, we have here. So, air flow, air intake and exhaust, air mover, fan controller, fan assembly. You have seen this no air intake and exhaust, it looks very simple, it looks very simple. You pick the air from the bottom and then blow it on top okay, or you take it at various stages. <laughs> if you remember I have remarked to you earlier saying you see here very conveniently you can see you have these four openings here at the bottom, you see the blue colored thing is the opening you are trying to take it out and then at the top they have made a some way of uh, what you call exhausting uh, things. So, anything which you keep close to the ground and uh, whether you like it or not there is dust. So, it also acts like a very good uh, vacuum cleaner and uh, the more the velocity is or even if a low velocity the more the pressure build up is chances are these things you know will start picking up uh, dust from outside. So, where do you take the intake and where do you exhaust it? Do you directly send it out? It looks quite nice if you can uh, somehow you know exhaust it directly on top, but you still have the problem of dripping water and things falling from the top. If condensation and all takes place obviously, a smooth channel is not easy to establish. So, invariably you end up with having to exhaust them on the sides or at the back in the case you no, know, it this is probably the rear of the equipment they are taking all the air and then blowing it at the rear of the equipment. So, obviously, location of air intake and exhaust is critical then we come to the actual device which moves the air do you loosely we call it a fan. So, you have axial, you have a tubular, tube axial, then you have uh, you know externally mounted uh, fans with uh, air filtering and something which comes here is filter selection. So, you would have seen often one of the things that seem to happen is filters get clogged. So, is there a way of having a filter which two things first of all it should not give a pressure drop straight away. At the time of design itself pressure drop should not and then over the time it should not increase in pressure as it selects. So, we are all since we are all automobile uh, rather now we have got used to a little bit of automobile all of you I am sure have come across the air filter inside your car or a your motorbike. So, first thing you will suspect is probably the air filter take it out and dust it off or better still you can probably pressure clean it and so on. But filters are now are about as uh, what do you call as sophisticated as anybody else. So, one of them is you have a cascaded filter from my point from the right side let us say that the air is coming in and here it is exact uh, I mean exhausting itself a cascading filter typically has something which is a coarse filter on the <laughs> air inlet side and in between the body of the filter is there and the last is the fine filter. So, what they do is one or two of them usually the coarse filter can easily be dusted off and uh, maybe depending on the construction of the the body main filter that also can be probably you know you can disassemble it and dust it off last fine filter is usually discarded. So, this is typically cassette filters which specialty companies do, but all this leads to tremendous pressure drop. So, next to best thing is can we take that inlet uh, or something have a, a bellows like thing, but made of some material which is loosely spaced, but can be coated with a gummy liquid typically. 
So, there are filters which have a corrugated construction made of a mesh and then they will give you a, a spray probably it is a little viscous uh, what you call oil like thing and then you spray it evenly let it rest such that it does not do and then when you put it back into the equipment as the air comes all the dust gets trapped there. Now, comes the important part if you have a sensor two sensors are required one is pressure drop sensor. So, on the exit point if you put a sensor which shows you the pressure it know that lot of pressure is lost secondly ultimate thing is if you have somewhere here imagine somewhere here you have a hot air sensor or temperature sensor. So, the moment temperature is getting more you know that more heat is being generated or air flow is not sufficient and if you have a flow sensor here somewhere here the flow sensor can directly tell you two things if you have a pressure sensor it will tell you whether the pressure is low another is if you have a flow sensor it will tell you whether the flow is low. So, large racks and you know where you can uh, effort to have this all of these things are used together. So, you have a vane switch then you have a standard pressure sensor and then here you have a temperature sensor usually something called a curie switch is there. There is a curie point uh, what you call I am sorry there is a magnet uh, where the curie point is adjusted in a critical thing if something exceeds around 80 degrees centigrade automatically it changes uh, state it loses its magnetic field. So, that whole thing is probably put on a reed you have seen the glass reeds beyond a certain temperature that uh, reed either you know either opens or closes and then that is an indication that there is something wrong in it. So, usually little bit of time is given and then you can do it. So, this is where you have this something you know very critical thing called the fan controller design. As I have mentioned to you earlier you cannot effort to have a fan which keeps blowing a lot of air continuously. So, two problems it will pick dust second thing is uh, fans are noisy absolutely noisy while in isolation if you keep something in a place in a test chamber preferably an anechoic chamber you cannot even hear the sound. But the moment you keep several of them and you know keep them in a narrow area and then you expect people to work there you will notice that it becomes very 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 loud. Then related to fan controller is the fan assembly saying how do you make the fan assembly different types of fans and uh, so on are there. Seen this here this word I do not know if I have shown you already. So, you have all this stuff hmm? card guide structures circuit base in a rack fan assembly design all this you no know, typically again I would like to acknowledge that the whole thing is made by degree controls uh, and it is their copyright in 2004 uh, and uh, since this is a educational purpose I suggest you try to retrieve it again or get in touch with them in case you need any more special assistance uh, their application engineers will probably help you. Since I do not get this uh, examples easily in the public uh, domain uh, from the published sources I am trying to use it. Next we come to equally important thing have you noticed it very rarely we find such things. Room level see very very critical thing is it is not just about cooling a printed circuit board by attaching something to the die. Finally, it ends up it how do you cool the whole room. So, we have here saying various type of uh, hot air cold air system saying somewhere in the room itself you have input ail means somewhere you can walk around other is uh, I mean uh, hot ail is the where the thing takes off. So, it is a little like the manifold you have except in the case of the manifold, manifold is fully closed and the variable cross section you can control. In the case of an ail it is an axis where people need to probably walk around and then uh, so we have all these uh, various uh, what you call things very neatly mounted here 
and uh, we have air flow distribution to the cold airs, floor layout per heat rack dissipation. So, heat rack uh, what I call heat dissipation, floor layout itself how do you space them and wherever you have communication equipment and uh, such equipment amount of cabling and wiring is very very high. You cannot imagine how big it is if I get a chance I will uh, try to take a picture from our own we are a very small place. We do not have many computers, but in spite of it uh, if you got uh, I suggest you go and have a look or uh, just check up on the now the Bible the internet Bible and you will see that they are very very dense. So, we have here things which are you know inlet into thing and then you see here this is from a data center. Data centers obviously lot of stuff is there then you have air flow balancing through the room. Kindly what you call permit me to take a stupid uh, take on these things while our interest is to keep the all this racks and all and I mean the peak temperature of the devices in a reasonable control. Generally our tendency is to stick a few indoor units so called split air ACs call the what do you call the person who install this them and then he has his own estimate. He will say sir uh, you probably require 8 tons roof what you call cooling uh, air conditioning unit and even the tonnage uh, they specify has a little problem. So, take all the we bring that fellow and then most important we end up is because it is a more like a firefighting no. We end up sticking the evaporator blowers in a convenient place in the wall because the plumbing uh, for the, uh, the what you call refrigerant plumbing also is equal, uh, important. And our bad luck is those units chill the operators people are supposed to do and then independent of those uh, <laughs> coolers the equipment continues to get hot. And then obviously, nobody wants to be you know like that uh, girl who freezes or uh, some of the Christmas stories. First thing they do is play with the thermostat and raise the temperature the moment you have it the whole thing goes. So, here critical thing is how do you balance the air flow whatever that uh, small louvers they give in the indoor units may or may not be sufficient. So, it may be you know more appropriate for you to put small there are fans which probably are about uh, 200 to 250 mm diameter multi directional you put them somewhere and ensure that air flow is balanced throughout the room and placement of the AC units. So, it is not very easy then we come to recirculation of the hot air if the air becomes hot what to do with the hot air in a very cold environment probably it makes sense in a hot environment like us what do we do with it do we exhaust the hot air then uh, when the inlet uh, air comes from outside you still have problem about it. Then you have another important thing is how efficient is your whole cooling system. I am talking from the electronic systems engineering uh, department. So, obviously, we take a systems approach saying attempt a top down approach. Then something very very related is two equipment reliability one of the reliability of this whole equipment. Second thing is <coughs> what happens to the reliability of all the cooling equipment. So, I would not call it a what I call trial and error or hit and miss uh, you need to just consider it nothing I mean nothing great about it, but considering is more important. So, we come to important thing saying understanding fans and system architecture. 
So, next uh, two slides or uh, two or three slides are uh, quite important you will notice that uh, I will try to go a little forward try to see if I can uh, get the fan model. I will go back again to where we have started. This is simple tube axial fans. So, you will see that early on in one of the lectures I mentioned to you saying there are these uh, what you call fans where they mention the static pressure saying typically it will give you about 1 inch meaning when no flow is there it gives about 1 inch and they also mention a delivery you know saying it gives uh, you know 100 uh, CFM 200 CFM and all that main attraction is they are inexpensive. So, you can have a full wall just like you have a video wall you can have a fan wall in which uh, let us say every tile uh, which is spaced uh, say about uh, 600, 700 millimeters, 600 above approximately all our uh, what you call false selling tiles are all uh, those uh, 600 uh, mm and all that no. Somewhere in the middle maybe you can have all this there are if you see your cabinets your 19 inch uh, racks and cabinets inside you have those 400 mm by 400 mm trays in which fans can be fixed have some of these things distributed freely wherever you want it is not very costly and depending on your type of uh, operation uh, you can have them uh, working off 230 volts or with a controlled input if you have a 12 volt input you can externally control the fan speed by reducing the voltage. But main issue is pressure capabilities are limited in high impedance systems. See here if you read the what you call extreme right of my curve very drastically the flow comes down extremely drastically it comes down there is slightest uh, this thing even if you put those normal heat sinks forget about space between the thing we have a little problem when they talk about low impedance it means free flowing if generally things are free flowing it is very easy I mean it is a stupid way of saying you know stick a few things down. Uh, but the thing is you can attach a few of these things on the bottom of the rack and then they manage it no problem. So, it is ideal for low impedance cap pulses are seriously limited in the case of high impedance systems. Next slide talks about different other types of thing compared to an actual fan and all that and then actually how does an air flow system work here. 